Hi everybody, my name is Mandy Pang. I'm the product manager for MySQL Heatwave. Today I want to talk to you about uh, MySQL Heatwave on AWS. Maybe before I go into the slides, who is running their workload on AWS? Is there one? One? <laughs> Two, <laughs> you are not two, not three, okay. And are you guys running like RDS, Aurora, Redshift? No, oh, I'm really surprised. But uh, so the idea of the MySQL Heatwave um, that we want to run it natively on AWS. So let me go into that then. So before I go into AWS, just want to give a high level overview of what MySQL Heatwave is. Uh, we are a single database service that provides OLTP, OLAP, and machine learning all in one single database service. The idea is that we have a heat wave cluster, which is an in-memory hybrid columnar engine um, attached to a single MySQL node. And uh, with this combination, we are able to run OLTP in the MySQL node and then get the query acceleration for complex query or OLAP queries in the heat wave cluster. Uh, the benefit of this is that you can use your existing MySQL application with MySQL Heatwave without any application change. The data will get real-time populated from the MySQL node. Any of the changes that get updated in InnoDB will automatically get populated into Heatwave. And then um, any of the existing tools, right, it's like analytic tools such as OAC, which is an analytic tool on OCI, Tableau, which is a popular one, they all can run uh, seamlessly with MySQL Heatwave and automatically get the acceleration from Heatwave. The other use case that we want to focus on is also machine learning. So we use the Heatwave cluster for machine learning so that we can uh, really quickly train a model, automate the whole machine learning uh, uh, lifecycle process, and allow the user to use very simple SQL interface to uh, run machine learning, whether it's training, inference, or explanation, so that we don't, uh, the user doesn't need to have uh, expert knowledge of the machine learning, and then be able to use that for, on their uh, MySQL data. So we have a really good momentum from our customers, right? Here's a list of examples of customers. They are from different industry, different sizes, and different use cases. And a lot of them actually come from um, AWS. When they are testing Heatwave on OCI, they are really happy with the performance improvement that they get from Heatwave on OCI. However, some of them cannot move their whole uh, workload from AWS to um, OCI for various reasons. So, because of that, they, some of them like, try to have the application on AWS and then running Heatwave on OCI, but we all know that AWS has a very high egress cost. And then sometimes the um, data center location between OCI and AWS can be uh, relatively far away, so then the latency between that um, for the application is too high as well. And other reason is uh, compliance reason. They may have already certified AWS and then they are taking a very long time for, to certify OCI, so they don't want to move their workload into OCI. And another reason is since they are very integrated into the AWS ecosystem, they want the database service to be also integrated into other AWS services, services so that they can have a single pane of um, glass, right, for all of the uh, service that they use. So that's why we are actually have uh, built um, MySQL Heatwave on AWS, natively on AWS. So what that means is that we have our control plane, our console, and our data plane all running in um, AWS. This is an um, Oracle-owned AWS tenancy, and any of the app, um, MySQL instance or Heatwave instance that you created will be natively running on AWS. And from the customer perspective, um, the way that they will be accessing it will be through um, cloud.mysql.com and console that we created for AWS to access and manage the resources. So on the high, very high level, the goal of the Heatwave on AWS, there's no difference between AWS or OCI. We all want to provide a single database service for uh, OLTP, OLAP, and machine learning. Uh, we want to provide uh, options for the customer if they prefer to run it on AWS or prefer to run it on OCI. So as you can see here, the same kind of proposition that we have, fully managed one database, unmatched uh, performance. We'll talk a little bit more on that, uh, machine learning, and then also autopilot as well. And on top of that, because we run natively on AWS, the, we can reduce the latency, reduce the egress cost, 
and then allow us to be deeply integrated into the AWS services in ecosystems to provide a much more richer experience for our AWS customer. So here is an example of the console that we have on AWS. Uh, I'll give you a quick demo or go through the uh, console later in the, demo, uh, in the presentation. But in terms of uh, performance, right, if you're looking at heat wave on AWS, when we're comparing to our competitors, whether it's uh, Redshift, Snowflake, BigQuery, or Synapse, we are still much faster. This is based on a t a four terabyte TPCH data. And then if you're looking at price performance, we are also uh, much better price performance across all the board. So as I mentioned, the other use case that we want to uh, um, target is the machine learning uh, use case. We want to allow our customers to be able to train, use machine learning using their MySQL data very easily and then expand their use case for their, for their customers. So that we have an in-database machine learning capability and when we are comparing with Redshift ML, we are actually 25 times faster than um, Redshift ML and then we are actually scaling very well as well on, on machine learning. The other aspect of the uh, service is the MySQL Autopilot. So this is a machine learning based automation that we have added for the service. It's available on OCI. In the beginning, we focused on more on the analytic or heat wave kind of use case. So the black uh, one that highlighted here is all kind of focused on uh, OLAP, but recently we have expanded the use case to uh, cover OLTP as well. So the area that we focus on is basically four areas, system setup, database, uh, data load, query execution, and failure handling. Uh, I'm not going to go into the detail of the OLED one, so I think Nippons and um, other session will uh, talk a little bit more. But I want to bring out the new features that we have added for OLTP. Uh, one is auto thread prediction. I think Wim in his keynote has actually talked a little bit about that. And then the other one is auto thread pooling. So auto thread pooling is actually a MySQL enterprise addition feature. So in MySQL HeatWave, the front node is MySQL, and then we use the MySQL uh, enterprise addition so, to, so that it allows us to provide additional security and then also additional features such as thread pooling to allow customers to make good use of our service. So without thread pooling, um, when uh, transactions come in, you can see it on the uh, right-hand side where the execution windows is kind of crowded together and then each of the transactions is uh, fighting for like, uh, resources. But with uh, thread pooling, basically what it does is that it does uh, emission control so that it allows us to be able to queue up the um, transaction so that uh, only the relevant uh, data uh, is accessed and then there is no uh, resource contention. And if you're we're looking at comparing with um, Aurora. You can see here that this is with uh, TPCC uh, benchmark, and then all the data fits into the um, buffer pool of MySQL. You can see that with the um, thread pool turn on, it actually we can sustain the performance while the concurrency is increasing. And then also we are uh, doing uh, much better in terms of the throughputs when the concurrency is high. You can see it here is 10 times uh, better than uh, Aurora. The other one is auto shape prediction. So we know that from uh, OLTP perspective, the workload can vary it's based on season, based on demand. So a lot of the time, it takes a lot of the uh, DBA time to actually figure out what is the optimal underlying hardware for the workload so that they can maximize the performance and then minimize the cost. So what we introduce here is the auto shape detection. So uh, at the back end, we collect the statistics from MySQL execution, uh, the query matrix, and all the information from MySQL. And then you, we have an um, advanced machine learning model that basically predicts, uh, based on the met, uh, metrics that we collect, and predicts the um, mem uh, buffer, mem memory buffer pool that is required for the workload uh, that we have seen so far. So in for example, in this case here that we have a few uh, benchmarks that we use for uh, showcasing this uh, feature. On the top of the table, you can see that there are like four uh, benchmarks that we use. We started with a small shape on MySQL, which is a 2V CPU and a 16 gigabyte of memory um, shape. And then when we run the uh, benchmark, you can see that the probable heat rate, uh, that's one of the matrix that we look at, is actually not optimal. 
And then so with the machine learning um, model, we predict that this should be upsize, and then we predict the buffer pool size that is needed. And with that, we translate that to the necessarily um, MySQL shape that we support, which is the 8 vCPU and 64 gigabyte memory of uh, shape. And then when we run the same uh, uh, benchmark again, you can see here that the throughput has actually increased, and then the buffer pool heat rate is actually much better. So that improved the overall performance of MySQL. On the other hand, on the bottom of the table, you can see that we started with a larger shape, uh, one similar benchmark, and then the uh, prediction suggests that to downsize. And once we downsize, the performance and the throughput is still about the same as before. So that helps to reduce the cost, right? When you don't need such a big uh, machine to run your workload, you can save the cost. The other aspect of the service on AWS is that since we are using MySQL Enterprise Edition, so there are multiple uh, features from Enterprise Edition that we have turned on for the service as well. So for example, masking, uh, um, encryption, and then also uh, the SQL firewall from um, MySQL Enterprise. And because we own the uh, MySQL, right, so all the security patch will be uh, the most updated. We apply to the uh, service um, based on the Oracle policy, so we applied it up to date so that you always get the latest security patch as well. The other aspect of the service that we have on AWS is that we support a small heat wave shape. So before on heat wave on OCI, we support a, a big MySQL uh, heat wave shape, which is a 512 gigabyte. Actually, today we are announcing that we are also supporting a small shape on OCI. But on AWS, we have already support both a, a large heat wave shape and a small heat wave shape. So one is a 16 gigabyte, and then one, the other one is a 256 gigabyte memory of the heat wave shape. So the idea is that we want to be able to allow customers to have some options when they have smaller workload, they don't need such a big uh, heat wave node for their uh, query acceleration, they can use a smaller node and then uh, lower the cost. And from our testing, um, the smaller shape basically scales really well. Uh, when we are comparing like, with using a smaller shape versus the uh, bigger shape, basically the performance is very similar. Um, so our scalability uh, in the sh uh, small shape is really well. So with that, I'm going to go over a quick uh, demo of the um, MySQL HeatWave on AWS. So uh, this is the console uh, when you, after you log in onto cloud.mysql.com. Uh, we have a different console design from OCI, so you may have a different experience on that if you are familiar with OCI. But the idea of this data is that we have some integration with OCI so that you will need to use your OCI uh, cloud account, create an OCI cloud account in order to um, uh, log into the heat wave on uh, AWS. So once you log in, you can see on the bottom that we have multiple tabs for different resource management and provisioning and monitoring. So here I have a MySQL uh, tab where it shows the list of MySQL and uh, if there's any like HeatWave instance attached to it. And if I click on it, you can see the details uh, of this instance information, such as like the endpoint where uh, you will use it for connecting to the instance and then the shape and, um, and the version of the MySQL uh, version, for example. You can also take backups uh, on this uh, system. And then we have also uh, um, introduced actually MySQL configurations. Now that uh, you can actually see the configuration, the default configuration that we set, which is optimized in two cases. One is that uh, for each of the shape that we support, as you can see it here, for each shape, we have two configuration support. One is more optimized for OLTP, which is the one that doesn't have the support heat wave. And the other one has a support heat wave, which is more optimized for uh, more of a heat wave workload where you are going to have more like mixed workload or OL, uh, OLAP workload. And then the other tab is the heat wave cluster. So in here, you can see the information about your heat wave cluster, how many nodes, which of the shape that you use. Um, before I go move on, I want to show you real quick on the provisioning of the MySQL DB system, which is a logical grouping, right, on, in our term of MySQL uh, system. And you can see here that we support a multiple shape of the MySQL node. 
And then I think the one thing I want to point out is that here is the availability zone. So currently on this um, demo account, we are running on the North Virginia um, data center in AWS. And then if I want to make sure that my application is on the same availability zone, I can use that and um, look at my uh, application, the AZ where it's at, and then put the database in the same available zone to eliminate or reduce the network cost and also the latency as well. And um, the other thing is the configuration that I mentioned and then the uh, MySQL uh, version that you can choose. Um, you can set the backup policy, and then once you have that, on the next page basically is that you can add the heat wave cluster at the same time, or you can wait until later when you have the data import into MySQL before you uh, add to um, heat wave. So once you have the data in um, MySQL and created a heat wave cluster, what we can do here is that because the data needs to be uh, loaded into heat wave in order for heat wave to uh, accelerate the queries, so you can go to Workspace, which is a new um, tab that we have added so that uh, it allows user to be easily manage the data in HeatWave. So we have a tab called Manage Data where it actually shows all the schemas and then the low status of the tables uh, that you have in um, MySQL. And if you really want to, like for example, load the schema here, right? So it's very easy. You can see the estimated uh, memory that we'll need um, the time it will take, uh, so if I click load, it will show you the memory and then the estimated time that it will take to load the data. So it's very easy, and then if you want to unload the data from HeatWave, you can also do the same on this uh, console as well. The other part of the workspace is the query editor. We want to allow customers to be really easy to get started with MySQL HeatWave from AWS. So we have this query editor where we show on the left-hand side the uh, database object, the low status of HeatWave, and then if you want to like, know a little bit details about the schema or the table definition as well, and which like, column since we have the flexibility to load the data uh, into HeatWay based on the columns or the tables or the schema, so you can see all of that when you are trying to construct your query. So here, for example, I have already loaded the uh, airport DB data into HeatWave, and then if I run this query, you can see that it actually runs really fast, and then uh, with less than, uh, it says here is 0 0.06 seconds. So um, that way, it allows our customers to be really quickly to try out HeatWave without having to have like uh, create any like a client machine to uh, run testing. The other aspect of the uh, surface um, is performance. I'm skipping the auto ML for right now because Sandeep has already done a demo, so I'm going to go there last really quick. But the performance uh, uh, tab here allows us to be able to monitor the matrix from, like, the, from the heat wave cluster perspective and also from the MySQL node perspective, like the CPU utilization, memory utilization. And then the other part that is uh, very interesting is that you can look at the workload that is run in HeatWave. So here I just did a, like a real quick one earlier today, run a couple of queries in the, this instance, and then you can see it here that the execution time and then the number of queries that are run in HeatWave and also what kind of queries, right? You can drill down into and then see the details of the query. The other interesting part that we have also added um, is the auto ship um, prediction. So earlier I was showing you the example where the advisor will uh, provide suggestions. And here uh, you can very easily actually see the suggestions from the advisor. And then you can see the statistics, some of the statistics that we collect over time and understand your workload, right? So like since I don't, I didn't use much on this instance and I was using an 8V CPU 64 gigabytes um, memory of the instance, as you can see here right now, um, the recommendation will be a downsize because the, it's overkill uh, at the moment for the workload that I'm running on this instance. And then the last but not least is the HeatWave Auto ML, which Sandeep and Salu has been talking about it. So it's very easy to allow our customers to be able to try out Auto ML, run a train machine learning model, and then also do prediction and then like a what if scenario. So that's kind of the overview that I would like to provide for the HeatWave on AWS. Uh, let me go back to the slides. All right. All right. So the last few slides that I have is actually some testimonial from our uh, customer on AWS. 
So in general, as you can see here, the highlighted in the um, quote there, basically a lot of customers basically find out that Heatwave on AWS basically deliver the same or similar price performance um, of, uh, compared to our Heatwave on OCI. And when they are comparing to what they are running on a a AWS, right, whether it's RDS or Aurora, they see a much faster uh, performance improvement uh, uh, when compared to their current deployment. And then the other benefits is like, uh, because you're running on RDS or Aurora, if you want to use Redshift, for example, then you will need to do ETL or Snowflake, you will need to do ETL. And then um, that all is eliminated from uh, when using Heatwave on AWS. So these are uh, another two customers who have tried um, that they find out that they are like 50 times faster when they are testing against their RDS. Uh, Lean Task is another customer who actually has a really, he has a mixed workload who has a really uh, high requirement on the network latency. So they have tried our heat wave on OCI and then find out that the latency is too long for the application, but they really like the acceleration and then all the automation from our service. So they tried our AWS service and then they uh, see that the latency has uh, greatly improved. And then so um, um, that's why they, they uh, really like our service as well. So these are two of the partners who have tried our customers. And um, actually, one of our uh, partners is using uh, Heatwave on AWSL for their own application. So just in summary, uh, we uh, have offer Heatwave on AWS as a native service on AWS. We want to provide a native experience for our AWS customers so that they can get uh, low network latency, they can get uh, eliminate or e minimize the egress cost from uh, AWS, and then they can get an integrated uh, experience with AWS with their database service. But overall, on Heatwave as a whole, we want to provide a single surface fully managed for OLTP, OLAP, and machine learning. We want to eliminate the ETL, provide real-time analytic. We want to provide the best price performance, whether in o uh, OCI or AWS provide an in-database machine learning capability so that user can um, make use of the MySQL data and create machine learning model and uh, provide to the end users. And also uh, automation uh, based on machine learning so that we can automatically improve the system performance and uh, scalability and also usability for our user. So with that, um, that's the end of uh, my talk. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, if you have time, please uh, scan the barcode and uh, rate the session. Thank you.